my journey through the program in human biology all began on an alternative spring break called uh, the Healthcare of Underserved Communities in the Central Valley of California. It was run by two former human biology students, Tina Chen and Elena Sherman, who are both now in the Stanford School of Medicine. And it was there that I began my journey with uh, underserved community health, that I started looking at, at the um, social justice implications of health. And I realized that uh, simply a biological framework was not enough to explain it, and that simply a sociological uh, framework was not enough to explain it, that you had to combine the two disciplines. And so they were both human biology majors and got me interested. So naturally, uh, of course, I'd say the night before, I, it, was, it was a bio or human biology path for, for me, a pre-med. I said, okay, human biology is, seems to have great people, seems to take more of an interdisciplinary approach, and by and large allows me the freedom to explore the types of courses and the type of research that I'm interested in. As I began um, my, my academic career, I, I found out that my interests lie mainly in global public health. And so um, through my human biology internship and through Professor Robert Siegel, I actually found an internship in Kenya working with a microfinance group. But the interesting part about this microfinance group, about the very financial, sociological side of, of community building, is that they tied that to HIV outcomes. So they had entire microfinance groups where every member was HIV positive and, and um, part of getting your microloan was also the receipt that you had taken your highly active antiretroviral therapy. So such that the, none of the people in the groups had ever died. And it was through the program in human biology that I, I was able to find that, that you can't dissociate um, things like medical treatment from the, the actual day-to-day -day needs. You know, I'd gotten back from Africa, I started my lab research, and I realized that there was a great um, honors program here in, in human biology. So I signed up for the honors program, and through talking with different faculty here, uh, Robert Siegel, um, Scott Smith, and, and of course with my pr um, primary investigator, Haley Gans, we decided that the most interesting thing to look at would be the persistence of vaccines in people that have HIV. Currently, we say that antibodies, the World Health Organization has used antibodies and the presence or absence of antibodies as being immune or not. But really, when you look at what's really important for the immune system, because it's a very complex um, biological network that you're looking at, it actually turns out that helper T cells, CD4 positive helper T cells, are the most important part of measles immunity. Without these specific uh, T cells for measles, you're actually not able to clear the virus. So what I looked at here with my honor thesis with, it was if people that had HIV were going to have persistence to the vaccine, because people with HIV, their T cells all T cells that are specific for all different antigens, vaccines, um, pathogens, when you get HIV, those are completely depleted. And then, uh, your, and then when you go into antiretroviral therapy, it'll bring back all of your T cells, but it's not quite known whether it brings back the same repertoire of T cells. And that's why we had this real question about measles vaccines. Are you going to have, could you potentially lose all those T cells that had been, um, you know, created in you by the measles vaccine, could you lose them after you've gotten HIV? And it turns out in my studies that actually you can, and that despite the fact that there are other markers within your blood that are saying you may have uh, immunity to measles, if you look at the really important ones, that you may not actually have immunity to measles it's because of their HIV status, and they can continue shedding it and can continue um, inadvertently uh, contributing to this, this global epidemic of measles. And, and this is what I think is, is so interesting about human biology. What my honors taught me is that, is that all of these little webs, all these interesting academic disciplines, they're all connected. And you can't, you can't, dis, uh, you can't disjoin one from the other in the way that you look at the world. And I've also worked with Support for International Change, which is another nonprofit in Tanzania. Uh, and then I've also traveled and worked a little bit with Jesse Liu, who's a former student advisor, who's a former uh, human biology major, and she's also now a Fulbright scholar, but she was working in Peru and Ecuador. And so I've had multiple experiences being able to sort of travel the world, which is why I was interviewed as a candidate for the International Public Service Fellowship at the Haas Center. I, I ended up being their, their top choice, and, and really it's the ideal fellowship for me because it allows me to engage with social justice issues um, on an international level, and I'm actually able to now look at it though from the biological and health perspective that I find so uniquely interesting. And that's why next year I'll be working with the Centers for Disease Control in Nairobi. It's interesting because they do a lot of great research, they do a lot of great epi data, and they do a lot of great molecular and biological basis of disease, but they do it in populations that are severely underserved. 
in uh, Kibera, which is an urban slum, perhaps the largest in the world, with one to three million people. And they also do it in refugee camps in the north in Somalia and in rural areas in Kenya. So all their science is all um, high quality, top-notch science, and it's however, looking at populations that are severely underserved. And that's something that I was taught in the program in human biology.